Hello. Hi. Do, 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 do. Thank do. you. Are we good? Good. Am I looking nice? <laughs> Is Kirsty looking nice? <laughs> All right, we're good. We can go? Yeah. All right. Hello and welcome. This is The Naked Truth, a show all about sex, sexuality and health. And today we are touching on a health aspect, which is nutrition. I'm not alone. I am here with Kirsty Baxter, who is a qualified nutritionist. Not only is she qualified, she is registered in the United Kingdom, guys. She studied at the Institute of Optimum Nutrition in Richmond, UK, and she's been practicing for about four and a half years. So. You might need to take a listen. She's gonna help you with your health so you can feel good before <clears throat> things, you know, happen. Christy, welcome to The Naked Truth. Thanks, my love, lovely you to be here. You got a beautiful smile. I'm just like, <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that smile. Right, so Christy, we're talking about um, nutrition. I'm just gonna put these cards away because my head is just like full, of, um, full of questions. So tell us a little bit about what being a nutritionist is all about. Thank you so much. So for me, uh, as, as a practicing nutritionist, it's really about um, health in, in total. Okay. So it's not really just about a specific diet. It's really about optimizing your health. I'm part of functional medicine, so we look at a number of different aspects and inputs into the body from the environment you live in, how, how you, where you work, the food that goes into your body, your mm -hmm. medical history. So we really get a holistic picture of, of all the inputs that are making you who you are. So that's why it's quite important. All right. So with what you've just described in terms of um, being healthy uh, sexually, what are some of the questions or the consultations that you have dealt with concerning sex and nutrition? Really, it goes, it goes back to um, the healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So where we don't necessarily pinpoint certain aspects that are potentially not functioning, we look holistically at what the person is doing with their health. Mm -hmm. Because these all play in to our various aspects of sexual health, uh, vir virility, whether we can fall pregnant, those kinds of things. So really, it's a holistic picture oh, yeah. of their health. Yeah. So when I see someone, we will look at and, and look at things particularly relevant in Zimbabwe are mm -hmm. things of overweightedness, hypertension and diabetes. And these conditions will have an effect on how we feeling, firstly, fe how we're feeling about ourselves. For women, particularly, weight is really an emotional aspect, as is, is the yeah. sexual encounter. Mm. And then on top of that, the functioning of that, particularly for men, it's really also making sure that they are optimally healthy to function properly. So when you're overweight or you have hypertension or diabetes, these sorts of conditions will affect how you, how you are sexually. I like the fact that you mentioned to function properly. I'm going to give you a scenario, okay. but these are two, okay, it's two stories, but one story. True. So there's a couple and they're about to do the do and they foreplay and everything is wonderful. And then during the act, during the sexual act, the woman's face is like, okay, any time now, like I'm not feeling anything, right? Same couple, the man is really into it. But it's not working. Okay. Is it a health nutrition issue or it's now something all to do with the mind? Look, it can be multifactorial. So definitely we know how um, emotions are linked to our, our state of mind. Mm -hmm. um, in, in that instance, there may have been things, symptoms that the woman was experiencing that are making it unpleasant. You know, things like vaginal dryness and for Ooh. the man... Maybe he can't uh, get his erection. So it's not just looking at that scenario. So w what were the conditions before that? W was there uh -huh. excess alcohol? Um, ah. are, are there issues that were underlying emotionally that are affecting the, the girl in that scenario? Mm -hmm. And then also, are there any factors within her 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 her, either her weight or in her health that are also impacting on, on her, her not really enjoying the experience. So it's, it's a number of different factors. So are there foods that we can take? Because <laughs> ah, I've tried everything. So after giving birth to my second child, I, I have two kids. Okay. Um, after giving birth to my daughter, I had a little bit of an issue down there. Okay. 
And it was an issue where I was like so embarrassed to be intimate with my then husband, ex-husband now. But, you know, it was an issue where I couldn't become intimate confidently. Before, ooh, girl, I was there and, you know, strip shows and everything. But then I got to a point where I did not want to get sexually intimate with him. So I would fake a headache. I would, you know, do all sorts of things because I suffered through like some serious um, vaginal discharges and they smell really bad. It was bad. And then someone told me, get a pineapple. <laughs> okay. And I did. And I was like, how am I going to use this pineapple? So what do I do? Dr. Google. I, you know, went and inquired, had a, a consultation with Dr. Google and Dr. Google told me, eat pineapples. 24-7, 365, every day of the week, and you'll be good, baby. Soak the peels from the pineapple and drink the water. Put the pineapples in your bath water, and your vagina will be smelling like pineapples. And I did, Kirsty. It worked, <laughs> I think, because I was now a little bit more confident. I, I was okay. I was good. So based on that... The food that we eat, does it really affect how we function, how our um, sexual organs then function? Yeah, let's, let's, take a, let's take a step back. Good question, because these sorts of things, and, and I work uh, so beautifully with a lot of the doctors in, in, in Harare and around Zimbabwe, uh, a bit, uh, my biggest adversary is actually Dr. Google, because <laughs> you know, it's, it's an instant access uh, of a, a multiple array of, of information, right. and unfortunately, coincided with that is misinformation. So I am evidence-based and, and the pineapple myth, uh, which I've <gasps> recently been alluded to, is, is just that because at the moment there is no substantial research to back it up. However, I'm not, I'm not dis, uh, dissing what you've said. Okay. One of the things that you were doing right was you were going to basic hygiene, particularly for women uh, in the lower nether regions. Mm -hmm. uh, so basic hygiene is very good. So uh, symptomatic post-pregnancy, there are often conditions of discharge or candida can arise based on, on uh, too many calories in the diet post giving birth because that's what you were used to. So those uh, hormonal disruptions can occur. Okay. It's natural. So they can be fixed by going to the doctor and getting put on an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. So they, they're not there for good. But the other side of it dietary wise is you then need to, I would skew the diet where we would lower the amount of carbohydrates so that we can get that candida, the yeast overgrowth reduced because that candida growth is uh, likes a high carbohydrate diet and would okay. keep making it worse. On the flip side of that is, um, besides being no evidence for the pineapple, the thing that wouldn't have been good for you is fruit is just sugar and pineapple is no different. <laughs> Something beautiful within pineapple, which is good for the stomach, are digestive yeah. enzymes. So in fact, so as a person... It could have, because as a <laughs> as a personal tra I train, and right. um, one of the things we do to 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 give you a boost before training and supply your muscles with glycogen is have a small portion of pineapple, so the mm -hmm. enzymes in that, as well as the sugar, is good for that. However, for you on the candida overgrowth, that yeah. would have actually exacerbated it. But it's interesting because wow. there are a lot of psychosomatic, and the psychosomatic relates to our connotation that is linked to what a food can do. And a typical one for women actually is chocolate. So we yeah. think when we have our periods and we're not feeling good and we're feeling quite low, our goat is often chocolate, not only for the sugar, but because the brain says that makes me feel good. Chocolate. So there's that psychosomatic link. And yes. for you, you were convinced by what you read on the internet that this has to work for me. And so you, you went I was through desperate. the, the I routine. Was like, I really need to, I cannot and, continue. And had you done that probably for a week, it would have really made the candida that much worse. So I'm sure you were quite smart. You just did it the once and you felt better because yes, it then helped the brain to say, no, it did. I, I can't, this, is, this is getting better. So, so there are those kinds of links. There very few foods that will give you a direct boost. Now, we do know that some foods will give you different body odors where if you eat asparagus, you will have that smell in your urine because mm -hmm. of the, the 
typical uh, types of polyphenols that are in there, that that's what they do. Garlic, another one that we can so smell it right through the skin. So why not for pineapple? Because I haven't found the research to oh, substantiate. Please find so it I will keep because on the there's research. There's a lot of women <laughs> who are chopping that pineapple and saying, so, I'm going to be smelling So what sweet. I would rather say to girls who are suffering with that is, you need to obviously ideally come to see me, but if you can't, reduce the amount of carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates in your diet. Mm. And I'm not saying that sudza is bad because I like the roughness and the coarseness of sudza here. Right. It's about the portion because we do need carbohydrates. Okay, so in what's our the proper uh, so portion? So for most girls and men even, it's the size of your fist. Uh uh. That should suffice. Kirsty, when you have your sudza, let me just take you back to that. When you have your sudza, what do you have it with? Well, ideally, you want to have a carbohydrate with a protein. Okay. So with a portion of so a nyama, a portion mm -hmm. of protein, and I know there's the muriwa that goes with yes. it. Now, all of this meal is fairly healthy, but what's not so healthy is the high amount of salt, which is contributing in Harare, in Zimbabwe, to the hypertension, and the high amount of sunflower oil, the saturated fats. All right, so here you are telling sadza lovers, sadza eaters out there, that their portion should be fist size, right? So they've got their fist size portion of sadza here, and then the nyama is roasted nice, you know? And I still have to have that portion of sadza. So how do you mean roasted nice? Isn't it like it's fried, it's got the onion and the tomatoes yeah. and it's name. So, so I'm just saying, I don't take away things. I'm just trying to help educate in that perhaps we don't need quite so much oil. Okay. We don't need quite so much salt. Obviously for six foot guys, they're going to need probably two fists of sudza. But for a girl <laughs> like you and I, okay. a fist of sudza is really should suffice with a portion of green veg and with your protein. All right. And then in terms of um, the men's sexual health, um, especially with erectile dysfunction or the function thereof, um, what is it that happens with men in terms of not being able to perform? Okay, so that then would get referred more across to a doctor where they would look to possibly look at the, the the urinal, so seeing a urologist to see if there are any things. Is the PSA level too high? Mm -hmm. uh, is the bladder working properly? All of these, you know, where are their testosterone levels? These affect uh, erectile dysfunction. But mm -hmm. on the other side of that, from a dietary or what we're doing in our diet is excess alcohol does not actually help with uh, erectile dysfunction, it would make it much worse. So initially, alcohol is lovely, as in as a glass would help relax uh, uh, one's persona. But when you're starting to go into excess, that's going to start to affect the functioning of the penis because it's also about blood flow. Okay. Where alcohol is really, it's a toxin that gets detoxed in the liver and it, too much of it in excess will then start to dampen the effects of how the body functions. Mm. So that's a big one. And I've seen a lot of it with young people in Zimbabwe recently where they're going out on a weekend, both girls and boys, and they drinking a bottle of wine and five whiskey, as they read on Dr. Google, is a healthy <laughs> alcohol. It's not. It's still alcohol. It's 40 percent of, uh, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. So it's really about making sure you're not doing that in excess because initially you're, you inhibit it, you're not inhibited and you're feeling great. But actually down the line, when you get to want to have that romantic uh, session, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you're, mm -hmm. correct, you're going to have some <laughs> issues. So, so um, there are a couple of nutrients that are important for men uh, in terms of uh, testicular health, which means getting lots of good sources of zinc, whether they supplement or from the diet. Right, right. We are a landlocked country, so we don't have access to beautiful fish where oysters are very well associated with being uh -huh. an aphrodisiac because they're very high in zinc. All right. So, o on that point, so would you say there are certain foods that can help with the penis growth for a man or not really not or necessarily just with growth um, possibly with helping so again back to being healthy weight with healthy blood sugars with healthy uh, blood pressure is going to have a big impact on 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 that uh, erectile function and not specifically food and that's where men often will go to uh, a doctor to get certain products like a viagra which would help them viagra all right, Kirsty, so just a quick rundown. Um, what is it that should be in our diet? Like a full, a, a holistic a approach, balanced. a balanced diet. Give it to us for both men and women. 
So they're not they're not different for men or for women. Okay. Obviously, there's some things for women hormonally that we need a few extra nutrients, like folate is very good for women, particularly if they want to fall pregnant. Uh, but in terms of a balanced diet, uh, a good clean portion of protein. So this is where I'm saying maybe using less oil when frying and if you can ever roast it or grill it as opposed to to fry it in deep fried oil not eating the fat the white fat on the meat and i know i'm told this is the best part it is the skin on the chicken Yummy. so we want to keep our saturated fats lower we only need about 20 percent of of our diet from fats and i know a big one here is peanut butter so, and nuts, those are, particularly peanuts, are very high in fats. Mm -hmm. So your portion should be one to two teaspoons of peanut butter or a handful of nuts, not a hundred grams of nuts. Uh. Balancing that, so that's your fat component. And remember, there are fats in different things from your milk, your cheese, uh, mohewu, you know, all the, so yeah. those are beautiful. It's again, it's about portion. The, so that's your fat side. The carbohydrate side, like I touched on, what we want to do is eat more carbohydrates which are high in fiber and from our beautiful soils here. Sweet potato, um, uh, butternut, pumpkin. Uh, you can do your sudza and like I say, the, the Zimbabwe sudza is lovely, it's coarse. You can also do your, your munga um, and, and your sorghums, those are beautiful. You right. want whole grains in your diet and then you want your, protein, your clean protein. So your chicken, your, a lot of people are eating soy now. And the sad part about soy is it's really hard to, to cook because it's a dry chunk, which I know I've, I've actually did a talk to try and help people prepare the soya better so that it's not fried in oil and then recooked in a pan with more oil. So trying to cook that soya in a, in a healthier, boiling it. Uh, and then also eggs are a beautiful source of protein. Okay, and they come with five grams of fat in the yolk. And they're also a very affordable uh, right. uh, uh, protein as well as fish. Fish is beautiful, we don't get a lot of it here. Out of the dams, obviously in the rivers, we're getting beautiful bream, so if that could be um, I know it's traditionally either stewed uh, or can be grilled or fried. So that we're getting a good source of clean protein, clean protein. Uh, good sources of high fiber carbohydrates where we're trying to have less saturated fats and, and refined uh, carbohydrates, pies, mm -hmm. chips, uh, chicken in, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. There goes so, Kirsty messing up <laughs> lunch for us because we were going to have like so, proper Sadza end. I want the sadza, oh. but I want it with a clean portion of protein. And then your green vegetables, and this for both men and women, particularly in, on, on a healthy and, and the virulent side, you want your green leafy uh, vegetables, beautiful kale, spinach, uh, muriwa, uh, uh, broccoli, collie, all the beautiful green beans uh, that we buy. And then a big component here as well is, and a lot of people are going plant-based, maybe not so much vegetarian, but there are a wide range of dried beans, nemo, legumes, uh, uh, legumes, sorry, of nemo and sugar beans. These, again, you need to watch your portions because these are incomplete proteins, but are also very carbohydrate dense. Wow. So really a healthy diet is about balancing that. It's not about saying you can't have sadza and you may not have. I really have, have a headache just <laughs> thinking about it. So Kirsty is just saying, so so that you know you can have like a healthy lifestyle in the bedroom this is all about sex and nutrition stay right with us we'll be right back It is the Naked Truth Show. Welcome back. We talk sex, sexuality, and health. With me is Kirsty Baxter, who is a nutritionist, because we're talking sex and nutrition. Now, Kirsty, um, are there foods that can assist us with fertility, libido, stamina, and sperm health? Because you know, Tine Mazondo, we've got the Mazondo. They are full in our fridges there. Because when the man comes home and he's like, the bigiri Mazondo, you know, because we've been told. Sure. It, it helps with, with, with that aspect of things. And then we've got uh, peanuts soaked in water that we as the women are drinking all the time to tighten 
the vagina. Okay. Are we okay? What 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 are we doing? <laughs> so I, I respect the cultural aspect uh, that is so intrinsic to 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 the local people here. Right. Uh, there is no Western uh, evidence to back up what they're saying. However, when I look at those kinds of foods, they are uh, so mutumbu and. Uh, the other one you mentioned, the Mazondo. Mazondos. Right. Those are actually high in iron and vitamin B12 and zinc. So those okay. are possibly why they would actually help. Because ah, uh, you terms... did mention that zinc is needed. Yes, yes, in the in the testes, but so is iron, very important. And those organ meats we know are high in iron levels. So mm -hmm. it could be that boost in the iron levels that are going to then help. Uh, as I said once again, a little bit psychosomatically, but as well as physiologically. Mm -hmm. uh, for women and the peanuts in the water, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just because they're then having enough hydration. That's one of the things I touch on as well, often in, or with each, each client, is how much water they're drinking. And often they're not drinking enough water. So potentially by soaking the nuts and drinking the water, yeah, yeah. they're actually increasing their water consumption and we oh. know as women we made her and men we made up for 50 to 55 percent water so that's why it's important to mucus health okay so right. that could be one of the reasons why okay and then in terms of like uh, vaginal dryness what foods can a woman take because you know when it's dry and then uh, maybe the foreplay hasn't been so good and the woman the vagina is not wet enough to receive yeah. It's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. So there are no foods that are linked to that. That's where they have the gels that are rather used instead that, you know, the doctor would put you, you can get at a chemist, a gel would be used. Oh, okay. So it would, we would look at a, a number of different aspects related to what is going on on a hormonal level mm -hmm. and then be able to assess that to see where that, you know, are they perimenopausal, that that is a result of the dryness. And if it's at a younger age, let's see what they're doing. I would actually assess nutritionally where they're going wrong, but I couldn't say off the top of my head right now, there's a particular food they must take. Okay. So it's really looking again at that whole health scenario right. uh, and, and making sure that's that's in play and what is happening on a hormonal level and we can influence that. All right, so Christy, if someone is looking for you, like they're watching right now and they're just like, you know what, I need to have a sit down <laughs> with this woman because I'm just doing it all wrong. I'm eating everything with a little bit more oil than normal. Uh, I'm, I'm soaking in pineapple. <laughs> Where can they find you? Thank you so much. Uh, my passion is really to help and educate people. So I would love it if I, I could um, see this, this program could reach more people. Mm -hmm. uh, my practice is based at Queen of Hearts in Highlands uh, and they can get, reach me. I have a, a Facebook handle and an Instagram handle. So yes, under Kirsty Baxter, Kirsty Baxter Nutrition on both Facebook and uh, Instagram. And I'd love to to see more people. My aim is to really try and get as get to as many people as possible because this is my passion. And and as I alluded to earlier, uh, I, I turned 50 this year and really I don't feel 50. You um, don't it's look because 50. <laughs> I think I do look 50, but Where? because <laughs> it's really about an, uh, an overall health and looking after your health and mm. finding what works for you. Right. All right, so you heard from Christy Baxter and where to find her. We will have the information on the screen. But today we just wanted to let you know that you can have a good relationship with your food and still be healthy so that you can, you know, go and please your partner. Remember to comment, like, and share, and also to subscribe to our YouTube channel that is The Naked Truth Show. And also information where you can get help on today's um, episode and topic and any other topic that we'll be discussing. Information will be on the screen. Until next time go and eat healthy like what am i about to go and do now so that means no sadza <laughs> for me today bye guys <laughs> doesn't mean no sadza oh, it's the, a smaller portion okay that's smaller portion but you know i'm like so into <laughs> my sadza and the roast and the roast stuff yeah but no this was good this was good i, I learned helped. Yeah. i learned a lot so i'm gonna just drink more water now yeah and if you having those hormonal surges where you're having your candida and things yeah, yeah, yeah. just bring the, the 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 sugary parts of your diet back a little bit